Welcome to C++ for Java Programmers. I'm Professor Califf, and I'd like to talk to you today about indel and backslash in in C++. Ending lines and knowing how to do them in C++ can be a little bit confusing because we have two different approaches for doing it available to us. We have the backslash in that is very familiar to us from places like Java. Other languages also use it. And then we have indel which is a C++ construct. So we need to know which one to use. And we often think, well, indel is the C++ one, so we should always use that. And we see some textbooks and things that actually take that approach. But it's really not the best approach. We want to understand what we're doing and why we want to use one over the other and in what situations. We want to understand the difference between the two. Backslash in is the same as it was in Java. It's just the character. Indel provides the same character, but then it also does something called flushing the output buffer. So it does some extra work. So then we need to understand what the output buffer is and when we might want to flush it. So what is the output buffer? It's a section of memory, basically an array in memory. And whatever is printed from a program is sent to that output buffer. So it's not sent directly to the disk or to the screen. It's sent to this section of memory and stored there until the buffer fills up when we send the data to the file or to the console or until someone specifically flushes the buffer, which is what Indel is doing in addition to writing the character. So why have one of these? What is an output buffer all about? As you may remember, if you've had a hardware class of some kind, writing to a file or to the console is very slow compared to writing to memory. And we typically don't need or want to write just one character at a time. The cool thing is that we actually can write quite a bit of data to a disk all at once. So we don't have to write each individual character to the disk and spend that cost. We can typically write 512 bytes, basically 512 characters, all to the disk at the same time. So then with our indel and our in, the backslash in is going to write the character to the output buffer and not do anything else. So it's sitting there in the output buffer. Indel is going to write the character to the output buffer, but then it flushes the buffer. So it says, hey, go to the disk, whatever you've got in the buffer now, or go to the console, whatever you have in the buffer now. And it goes right then. Now, there are times when you actually want to do this. For example, if you're doing debugging printing and you're dealing with a program crash, if you use Indel, you can guarantee that all of the output from before the crash is seen. So you know exactly where the crash is occurring, as long as you put output frequently enough around it. Without the indel, sometimes you get all of the prints that you had before the crash happened, and sometimes you don't. Each semester, I typically get one or two students who come to me and say, this line is where my program is crashing. And I look at it, and it's something like I++. And I'm like, um, not likely. Did you put indel after your debug printing before and after that line? The answer is always, uh, no, I forgot to do that. I'm just using backslash in. They put in the indel and lo and behold, the program is crashing someplace where maybe they tried to access a null pointer or something similar that we would expect to cause a program crash. Indel is very useful in that case. So you might be thinking, well, let's just use indel all the time then. Let's take a look at a little program to show us why we don't want to do that. So I've written a couple of programs to help us see what's going on with backslash in and indel and why we might not always want to use indel. So what I've done is write a simple little program that takes a couple of command line arguments, the name of an output file and a number of values. And then it just runs a little for loop, writing each number from zero to one less than the number of values to a file. And in this first version of this, I have the backslash in for each line. The second program I have 
you should see is exactly the same program, but we're doing indel instead of backslash in. So that's the only difference between these two. Let me actually prove that to you and show you how conveniently we can see differences. So I'm going to compare these two programs and we see everything exactly the same except those two lines. So now let's see what happens with them. See if they behave differently. So I'm going to compile each of them. I'll name the first O and I'll name the first one out one. And that's right large one.cpp. Then we'll name the second one out two. Now I'm going to run each of these programs and I'm going to use the time command to see how long they take. So first let's run the out one program. So this will be the one with the backslash in and let's send it to junk and say a hundred thousand. That seems big enough to get something interesting. And we can see that that took not very long to run, 0 0.008 seconds of real time, and we can see user and system CPU time. Now let's take a look at what happens if we do the same thing with out two. And that took a little bit longer, though you may be thinking it's still way less than a second. So let's do it with a bit larger. Um, set of numbers. So I'm going to up this to 10 million. And without one, that still takes us quite a bit less than a second. But without two, it's taking a little bit longer. Let's see what happens here. And we see it took over 11 seconds. That's a difference. You know, that's where we start to really see the difference. And you may be thinking, well, why would I ever be writing 10 million numbers? Well, not really often, but you may be writing quite a bit of stuff. And if you're doing a lot of other processing, this can be a problem. Every semester, I have students who on the big tests that I run to make sure that their data structure is properly implemented and efficient. I will have a few students who didn't use backslash n and used indel in writing the big file of output. And so even though their data structure is efficient, their code times out because they used indel and their file writing took way too long. This is a reminder that Indel might be a useful tool if we need that flush, and there are times when we do, but it's not the answer all the time. So the bottom line here is, in most cases, we should go ahead and use backslash in. So the bottom line here is that, in most cases, we should go ahead and just use backslash in, just like we did in Java. It's going to be more efficient. But when it's important to guarantee that this line of output goes to the file or console immediately, we want to use indel. Now, do notice that in user interaction, it typically doesn't matter which you use. Thanks for watching. I hope you find this video helpful, and I look forward to seeing you next time.